Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, and our affiliates and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any person or that an investment in such securities will be profitable in general. Given the nature of the company's profile and the lack of an active trading market for the securities, investing is highly speculative and carries a certain high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its hosts for the profile coverage. From time to time, we sell shares of the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stocks if we are speaking about interviewing or covering a public company <laughs> compensation. Specific questions on compensation can be obtained by contacting producer at salientgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before investing in any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our investors to invest carefully and read the investor information available at the websites on the Securities and Exchange Commission at sec.gov and or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at www.finra.org. All right. I like it. Somebody's going to jail. That is a disclaimer yes. that is required by the SEC. So we thought we'd <clears throat> spread a little pixie dust on it, make it like you got home late last night and you saw that litter on your shoulder. <laughs> no, honey, I was at a meeting with Sully. Big Biz Show. <laughs> BigBizShow.com is our website. Of course, Sully speaks money, 100,000 active users, 3 million active, what do they call them? Uh, views? Viewers. All right, come on. So, I believe that Greg and I got super excited when we met this guy, Jay Gardena. Oh, yeah. Because they weren't just diamonds. They were lab-grown lab. diamonds. And, you know, there's something, like he's, like, he's making them. I know. I need some money for the weekend. Just sprinkle some powder in here, throw it in the microwave. You got to, honestly, though, it is a really solid business model. And I've never heard of it, but as you start researching how many diamonds are lab-sourced, lab it's unbelievable. Jay Gardena, of course, is the CEO of? Adamus. <laughs> Adamus One, stock symbol J-E-W-L. He's one of us. He's basically going to be our next uh, co-host. Mm -hmm. yep. Jay, great to see you, man. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, we're remote today, by the way. We're doing um, some studio shooting. Uh, are, you at, like, a, are, you, are you in a tasting room? Yeah. You know, like, I, I wish I was in a tasting room. <laughs> After this, I'll be in the bar, though. <laughs> So you're, are you in the lab? Are you in the lab for Adamus? So actually, yesterday I was in the lab for Adamus. Um, we had a couple of groups in doing some tours of some of our uh, clients. Today we're actually in the studio shooting a bunch of our jewelry line, which is our uh, El Jolie line. It's actually pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, I have to and ask. No, you, that's not my motorcycle. Yeah, of course it is. You know it is. He's the CEO of a public company. No, I'm not using the money for a motorcycle. <laughs> Jake, uh, Jake, I have a moped. How, um, how long does it take from inception to fruition to make a diamond? So we start the process with the diamond seed, like we've talked about previously. And then basically a 30-day process, each one of those tiny diamond seeds turns into about a 6 to six to 10 carat rough diamond. So basically, if, if I need vacation money, we, we plan it today in October. Yep. <laughs> uh, next thing you know, Jed's a millionaire. Yeah. Um, <laughs> exactly. But then, you know, we take them, we clean them up in how um, laser off some of the edges. And then we send it over to uh, India for cut and polish. Are, and then are, GI certification. And then back in the States where we distribute them. Are these uh, cut like regular diamonds? Is the process the same as if you mi mined it out of a cave somewhere? Yeah, absolutely. So the cut and process, the cut and polish is identically the same. I mean, it's all hand done. Uh, you look at everybody, the process is pretty amazing to watch. It's a true artisan process. So it's very hand driven. You can have wheels. Obviously, diamonds are the house substance. So the only thing you can cut them with would be another diamond. So the diamond wheels are used to, to cut and then to polish the stones as well. And then we set them for the same grading that mine diamonds do, the four C's, which everyone's heard from De Beers. Um, so GIA is the number one certified body. So that's what we're saying. Jay, as, as your company continues to take off, do you sense that 
jewelers and people who want to buy your diamonds are in line with you as far as, you know, no one was killed in the process of mining these diamonds, child labor wasn't used, that you're completely, you know, skipping any of those uh, atrocities that go on with blood diamonds? Super up, uplifting question. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, it, yeah, I always tell everybody, you don't come to our factory. I mean, we don't have a 11 or 12 year old with an AK-47 to go ahead and make them work. I mean, so we're definitely on the, on the flip side of that. We always look at, you know, how to be eco-friendly, so we're working to self, save, and protect the environment, as well as, you know, being social friendly, just like you said, the blood diamond aspect of it. And, you know, mine diamonds are mine diamonds. You know, we don't want to come and bring on their parade. You know, we see the, the bell curve really shifting right now to where, you know, the majority of, of diamonds purchased in America right now are lab-grown diamonds. Um, and we're really proud of that. We're proud that we're a true ESG company, and we do everything we can, like I said, to help the environment and really help social in all kinds. Hey Jay, talk about price point. I think you said the first time you were in here, there, there's uh, just there's a sort of a, a gap between going to Tiffany and looking for a mined diamond. Is that is that accurate? Sure. So we look at the, the price differentiation. It's it, it's kind of varies around. I mean, the, the mined diamonds are starting to drop their price to be a little bit more competitive with the lab grown diamonds. Um, when lab grown diamonds first came in the marketplace, they offered at a discount to mine because that was what made it more attractive proposition as well as there's more profit margins in through all the distribution chains. Um, so currently in the retail market, you're gonna take more between 35 to 55% at a discount to my diamond for a long run, which um, means you can get either a higher quality diamond or a bigger diamond. Jay, I wanna talk about the scarcity issue that you and I have talked about, because mm -hmm. this is a market driver. I mean, even in a world where we all learned about supply chain problems, there is a scarcity factor with respect to precious stones. Talk about that. Sure. I mean, look, Mother Nature only made so many diamonds, right? And so what's happening, and you're starting to notice, and this is one of the big eco issues with mine diamonds, is they're having to dig further and further into the ground to find stones. And, you know, 100 years ago, what a center stone was a quarter of a carat, you know, to a third of a carat for, for an engagement ring. Oh. Now, especially with lab-grown diamonds, they started to climb over that two-carat ring. To find a two-carat mine diamond is obviously much, much more difficult process. Yeah. So it's, as you see things starting to evolve and change, it's really putting more pressure on the mine diamond industry. Hey, Jay, before we let you out of here, can you talk about your uh, re retail brand of uh, El Jolie? Sure. So El Jolie, our, our goal was to produce um, the highest and luxury jewelry line in lab-grown diamonds. Um, all American-made product. We, you know, we, we hired some of the best designers, best packaging. See that shameless plug is good for you? Uh, and then obviously we look at our shoots, everything we did around it to make it that high-end luxury. So we, our goal was Louis Vuitton, Van Cleef, uh, Cartier, and we really strove and we pushed ourselves and pushed all of our, all of our diamonds in there, DE color, VVS2 were better. So if you look at wow. clarity and color, it's as good as you can get. Um, and then the jewelry, the look and feel of it is far down. The, we're uh, really, really proud of that. Are you guys focusing more on, on the B2B uh, diamond business or B2C at this point, or is it, or is it everything? Kind of both. I mean, obviously, B2B is the original out of the gate for us. Um, we're selling a wholesale basis. We're working on our direct-to-consumer site, ljolie.com. We're looking to launch that. I mean, our original goal was to launch you know, September, October. I think we're going to push that till the beginning of the year for a handful of reasons. I don't want to launch a, a company and a site when everybody's doing 50% off. I mean, right. Americans mm -hmm. are really geared towards that Black Friday, you know, Cyber Monday. We want to make sure that we don't get caught launching a luxury brand and, and discounting the for that. There's, there's we got to no get you back here, man. Like you are our okay. most, you're, you're our most handsome guest and our favorite guest. Yep. Jay Gardena, <laughs> yeah. CEO Adamus One. J E W L is the stock symbol. You can go to AdamusOne.com, and you're gonna hear a lot more from them. I mean, come on. Right. You think like oh, pull something up for the effort for the, yeah. you know? Right. Like hey. Yeah. You know? Right here on my nose. Oh, I like oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. But think about that. I can have a I can have a pile of diamonds in 30 days. Right. Just about tax time. Like, <laughs> there's something to say. Big Biz Show, BigBizShow.com. We'll see you in a
exocrine pancreatic insufficiency, cystic fibrosis, chronic pancreatitis, ulcerative proctitis, proctosigmoiditis, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease. If you've heard any of these words from your doctor before, you probably know this look and this feeling. First Wave Biopharma is a clinical stage biopharmaceutical company specializing in the development of targeted non-systemic therapies for gastrointestinal diseases. Using frontline cutting edge research, First Wave Biopharma is here to help you have less of this and more of this. First Wave Biopharma.